Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome. I'm John. Uh, I'll be co-presenting this with Alexander. Uh, and we'll be talking about data sketches. This is all based on an open source package we have. Uh, we found sketches to be a completely invaluable tool for speeding up our processing and doing things quickly and flexibly, but still accurately. So, with that, the basic challenge that we have at Yahoo uh, Yes, by the way, we are both from Yahoo. Uh, so the basic challenge we have is we have tons and tons of data in our web logs. Uh, so we'll have stuff like the time of an event. Uh, we might have you know, the user ID, some cookie or device ID, uh, what site they visited, how much time they spent there, you know, what all they did that, uh, on that site. And there's lots of questions we want to be able to answer about uh, using this data. So some of the common things are how many distinct users we have, uh, what are the most frequently viewed same news stories, um, and then other stuff, you know, what is the distribution of time spent? How many users spent, uh, what portion of users spent more than uh, you know, n seconds reading a story? And all of these things end up being uh, fairly expensive to do exactly on giant amounts of data. Why are they hard? Well, so take for instance, counting distinct items. There's a theoretical uh, limit if you're gonna do this exactly, which is that it's gonna take space you know, uh, proportional to the number of items. Uh, if you don't have any prior knowledge of the uh, underlying data, there's no algorithm that can do better than that. So you're gonna need at least that much data. So the traditional exact approach, and yes, I know this is the Hadoop user group, we'll get to there in just a moment. Uh, you have all the stuff in your database, you have your query, and you need to grab everything. It's going to be, you know, if you're counting distinct users on something the scale of Hadoop, you're gonna have gigabytes of data that you need to be able to process. Uh, in order to do that, you're gonna either need to be able to sort them, or at least come up with something to distinct them, uh, hashing, whatever. Uh, and this is going to be pretty expensive when you're talking about you know, something on the order of a billion users per month. So if you're able to handle approximate results, then sketches can do wonders to help reduce the amount of data and massively speed things up. And we're not talking about approximate in a, you know, what we think is roughly this. All these algorithms have uh, probabilistic but uh, mathematically proven error bounds. So you can have a very good idea of what your error distribution is going to look like for the <coughs> answers. Uh, so all our sketches have a parameter we call k, which is related to the sketch size. Uh, so we have that here. For distinct counting, uh, if you have a k of 4096, the size of the underlying sketch is going to be about 32 uh, kilobytes. There's a separate type of sketch called HLL that you might have heard of if you know of sketches. Uh, that's more compact, but less flexible in many ways. So I'm not gonna focus on that. And if you use that, you're gonna have 1.6% relative error. So that means if, uh, and this is the 95% confidence interval. So 95% uh, confidence that your error will be no greater than 1.6% relative. And that's gonna be true whether you're counting a few thousand items or whether you're counting a trillion items. Um, similarly, for frequent items, you can have a K of uh, 256, you can have a few K for the actual sketch, and you're going to have an absolute error for the items that's 1.4% times the weight of all your items. Um, and again, with quantiles, in the case of quantiles, the error is going to be over the rank. So if you ask for, say, the median, the 50th percentile, we're going to return um, something that is you know, so it would be, uh, can't do, uh, plus or minus 1.7% of 50%, or of the 50th uh, percent. Uh, and of course, you can uh, improve the error bounds by using a slightly larger sketch. So, very uh, good results here, and much smaller. Sketches have been around for a while. The initial research was back in the 80s. You might see them <coughs> some stochastic streaming algorithms, or some linear algorithms. Uh, the basic of distinct counting came out of uh, the 80s. Unique counting, there was some new uh, 
interest in, in the mid-2000s as the data volume started to wrap up uh, massively. Uh, and there's still some new work that came out of the researchers at Yahoo uh, this last year. Frequent items, it's, you know, not even, it's not quite a decade old. And quantiles, uh, estimating histograms is still an active area of research as well. <coughs> uh, so there's lots of algorithms that fall under the broad umbrella of sketches. For the library we have, there's several common elements. They're all single pass, so you only need to go through the, the raw data once. They're going to be sublinear in space, meaning the size of your sketch, if it's not uh, absolutely bounded, is going to grow much slower than the amount of data you feed it. They're mergeable, which is a really useful property. It means if I have a sketch I built on a uh, stream of data uh, one day, and a separate uh, sketch from, say, a different day or uh, a different property. If I merge those together, then it's going to be as if I had built a sketch from both sets of the underlying data in the first place. So I can effortlessly combine them and it'll do the right thing. It'll do what you think of uh, when you would imagine combining sketches. And again, they all have uh, proven error bounds. So the basic idea is we have our uh, data stream it gets fed into some sort of random selection algorithm, and the specific algorithm is gonna vary depending on the type of sketch. Uh, and that's gonna go into the sketch data structure. The size is going to be some function of that K parameter I mentioned. And then we have an estimator algorithm uh, using the sketch data structure. And it's going to give us a result where our error epsilon is, again, a function of K. John. <coughs> um, so I see many of you standing at the back. There are pockets of seats inside, so please, uh, you know, feel free to uh, come in, or maybe at an opportune time um, when you feel uh, between the presentations. So, um, folks at the back, um, you can come in. Thank you, Joe. I won't be offended if people move while I'm talking. <laughs> Uh, so there's a number of big wins we've gotten out of this. Uh, the first one, again, this is the Hadoop user group, so it's going to be pretty obvious to everyone, but for the sake of completeness, we'll go through it anyway. By being single pass and sublinear in space, uh, just doing the query alone. So imagine running on a single threaded system. We can query, <coughs> we get the sub back, and the resulting sketch is now going to be on the order of the size of that K parameter, rather than uh, say for the distinct counting case, on the order of the number of distinct uh, items. Um, but of course, you know, single threaded is going to be really slow if you're doing massive amounts of data. Anyway, we don't want to focus on that. <coughs> so we can uh, we can rely on partitions. So we have the various partitions, and we can build a sketch on each of those separately. And merging is in general very fast. So now we have, uh, per partition, a very compact summary, and we can merge those. So this is big win number two. But we can actually go further, and rather than querying the raw data every time, we can build a data cube. So for things like distinct counts, the reason we can't build a cube uh, normally is because they're not additive. You can't take the number of distinct people that came on day one and compare it to the number of distinct people that came on day two, or add it to the number of distincts that came on day two, because some people might come every day. So uh, whenever you have non-additive uh, data, you can't just throw into a cube and query it across dimensions like uh, uh, as uh, you need to for a proper cube. But with sketches, because they're mergeable, we can now do exactly that. So we can actually build a data mark where for every dimension, uh, every combination of dimensions, we have a sketch. These are small. If you have fewer elements than the size of the sketch, then we can just keep all of them, and uh, it's still going to be small. So a lot of these, uh, for rare combinations of dimensions, might be empty, and that's okay. Um, so we can build our cube, and now we can start querying across any combination of dimensions we want, and merging is, as I said, very fast. So this opens up the possibility of doing lots of very expensive things, almost trivial. <coughs> uh, so we only need to pull the rows, uh, the desired rows, and of course time is just another dimension. So we've been able to speed this up and query across you know, 
a month or multiple months of all our data, and it'll return in a couple seconds. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Alexander, who will go into a little bit more detail on the advantages and a couple case studies. And I'll be back at the very end to do a pitch for we want to get a user group going around sketches. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Sedeko, and I'm going to talk about some practical aspects of using <coughs> And I want to start uh, from emphasizing advantages uh, to architecture of the system. Uh, I believe this is a very important point and very often uh, underappreciated. Uh, so, sketches uh, give us an opportunity to simplify our systems uh, drastically. I want to contrast that to uh, exact uh, counting or brute force uh, unique uh, uh, metric computation. Uh, John already mentioned some of that. Uh, uh, so suppose uh, we are going to build a report uh, with uh, some dimensions and uh, a few metrics and some of the metrics are unique counts. Uh, uh, so, as John mentioned already, uh, with exact and brute force uh, computation, it's not a data cube at all. Uh, we're going to produce static reports, as we mentioned here, uh, meaning that report is for particular combination of dimensions and particular period of time. And uh, you cannot drop a dimension, let's say, and come up with overall count. You need to go back to raw data and produce another report for that combination of dimensions and that period of time. Uh, with sketches, we uh, can uh, view that as an additive uh, data cube. So essentially, sketches, in this case, uh, convert non-additive unique count metric to additive thing. Uh, and so that simplifies the processing steps. Uh, we need uh, fewer steps and fewer intermediate tables. Uh, and it enables reporting on arbitrary dimensions. You can just drop a dimension or two or three, whatever we don't need for a particular report, add across dimensions and across time as well. And that also allows to have flexible time period reporting, like rolling day instead of calendar day, or rolling week or month, or do some sort of uh, time zone adjustments. And uh, also another uh, unique opportunity uh, which opens up is uh, other set operations, not only union. Uh, when we talk about merging sketches across dimensions, that's a union operation. But we can also do sketch uh, intersections or, or set difference, uh, like uh, A but not B kind of stuff. And that can be used either for user retention reports, like uh, out of users which showed up on day one, how many users showed up on day two, let's say. Or some sort of a filtering when uh, we later on figure out uh, which of the users were up users. Uh, uh, so use uh, um, other sketches from, let's say, abuse uh, detection system and subtract the unique counts from the reports easily. Uh, which brings me to case study one. Uh, we wanted to show that you don't need Yahoo scale to get benefits from sketches. So we wanted to have a very simple example which, which still shows substantial benefits. Uh, so uh, the uh, problem setup was uh, to have just a few dimensions <coughs> and two unique count metrics on ID1 and ID2. And we used uh, data logs from one month uh, of, uh, of Yahoo web logs. And uh, the goal was to process uh, reports uh, in, uh, in two ways, exact uh, brute force computation and using sketches for that month's uh, worth of data. Uh, and we did that in Pig, Hive, and Spark. And we got uh, similar results. 
uh, and here we are focusing on the results uh, from peak. And we want to build the reports hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly. Uh, so here we have uh, <coughs> data for exact and sketches uh, for hourly computation for each hour of that month. Uh, so we had uh, two stages uh, just because um, for exact unit counting on ID 1 and ID 2 we need to do that separately, some sort of distinct uh, process doing distinct combinations of site, hour and ID. <coughs> and we didn't uh, include any uh, additive metrics like number of events because it's trivial. So we just wanted to show unique uh, count uh, metrics. Uh, so uh, first stage was to do distinct combinations uh, and uh, store that data as intermediate data for other stages. And uh, combined uh, storage for the months of data on these two intermediate tables was that. And this is CPU seconds uh, overall taken. And the second step was to derive actual report for that hour with uh, uh, going from uh, distinct IDs here to, to distinct count. Uh, and uh, in contrast uh, with sketches, we just uh, essentially compute that cube with site, hour, and two sketches. And uh, counts are easily derived from the sketches, so just simple call like get estimate. And this is saved as a data cube for use in other stages as well. And you can already see dramatic difference in terms of intermediate data size and uh, CPU time taken. So here is the continuation of that example, uh, daily rollups. Uh, so for exact computation, uh, we're, uh, starting from those hourly intermediate tables, we produce two more intermediate tables, uh, this time uh, on a daily basis. Uh, again, a distinct, distinct combinations of site hour and ID 1 and site hour and ID 2. And uh, they are, as, again, they are done separately on each unique ID and then the results are joined to produce the report for that day as stage 2. And in sketches, this is just query against that cube we had uh, pr prepared for hourly. So this is just done in a very short time and we don't need to store anything here as intermediate data. So this daily data was stored again to use later for weekly and monthly rollups. So these numbers are the total for the one month worth of data processing. Again, you can see substantial difference in uh, the CPU time taken and again here we store intermediate data and here we don't have to. <coughs> and uh, finally uh, weekly and monthly rollups uh, so we, which we for exact counting we derive that from daily intermediates uh, and this includes uh, total time producing four weekly reports and for monthly we also try both ways from daily intermediate and from hourly intermediate uh, and for sketches again this is just a query against the data cube we saved during the hourly processing and as you can see again the substantial difference in CPU time taken so uh, let's summarize uh, Again, I want to emphasize uh, this is a very simple example with just a few dimensions and just two metrics. This is very much favorable uh, for exact counting because in real life systems we have many more dimensions. We cannot store two separate intermediates for each ID. It's going to be one table with both IDs uh, and uh, more, more dimensions and the table is going to be much larger uh, and still this simple example already, already shows that you have substantial benefits uh, this was the batch process uh, uh, however sketches open up a possibility of loading that data cube in some sort of real-time reporting system like Druid for example 
uh, and then uh, just query that data cube on the fly where you can get the report in milliseconds or seconds at most. Uh, and again, uh, using that flexibility which opens up uh, with uh, dropping arbitrary dimensions or flexible time periods like rolling days, weeks or months and such. Uh, and uh, once more I want to emphasize that uh, this is a small example and in real systems with many more dimensions and many more metrics the difference is going to be even more dramatic. And uh, this brings us to more big wins, five and six, for large scale. So this approach really does scale. Uh, so here for case study two, uh, we have an example of uh, real production system, uh, analytics system for Flurry in Yahoo, uh, where we have uh, <coughs> two parts essentially. Uh, one is uh, near real time, which has a 48 hour history, and then batch system for historical data. Uh, so the data arrives uh, from uh, web servers, uh, or from edge servers, let's say, because they, it's usually about uh, uh, smartphone applications. Uh, so through Storm, it's collected and ingested into Druid on one minute resolution, and then the reporting system queries Druid in 15 minutes, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 15 second intervals, so your graph is updated every 15 seconds. And historical data goes uh, through batch system and uh, taken advantage of mergeability. Uh, here, late data is supported easily uh, because uh, from smartphone applications, data can arrive later, sometimes several hours, and even days later. Uh, let's say uh, if uh, there was no coverage for a while or application was shut down for a while and then opened up next next day or something like that. And then it only sends that chunk of logs. Uh, and uh, using sketches, it can be easily incorporated uh, into the reports uh, uh, as opposed to exact counting where you just need to restate. It's just impossible. You, you need to restate particular period of time, let's say the day worth of data or something like that, which is essentially out of question. So, uh, here's the summary, before and after. So before, using sketches, uh, this is a virtual CPU uh, for seconds. Uh, this was on the order of 80 billion. And with sketches, it's just 20 billion. And uh, again, it's not only time, but also that flexibility of the architecture. So near real-time reports is just not possible with uh, brute force exact approach, but here we have near real-time reports. And uh, here uh, I want to describe what uh, other, well, John already mentioned that, but we just want to summarize uh, that uh, those case studies were focusing on the cardinality estimation sketches, uh, primarily theta sketch, uh, but we also have other families, quantile sketches for histograms and uh, just in general distribution estimation like uh, probability mass functions, cumulative distribution functions and such. Uh, for uh, all sketch families we have uh, samples, uh, like example code, uh, on the website for Java, Pig, and Hive. We have adapters for Hive, Pig, and sometimes for Druid. Uh, we have frequent item sketches where you can compute heavy heaters of arbitrary objects. Um, we also have all the examples and uh, Pig and Hive adapters. We have tuple sketches. Uh, uh, which are associative sketches uh, where with e unique ID we can associate some additional att attributes. Uh, we also have examples and adapters. 
and this is a recent addition, a sampling, reservoir sampling with uh, proper merging uh, and proven error bounds and such. And there is no adapter for Hive yet, we are working on it. So, thank you very much. Uh, please visit our site, uh, datasketches.github.io. Uh, there is a Google group uh, for all questions and so on. Contributions are welcome. It's all the code is in GitHub, so please uh, have a look. Uh, open issues if you have them. Uh, ask questions in the group. Uh, contribute the code. Thank you very much. And as I mentioned, uh, we know that there are other people. Uh, so Google has at least one researcher working on sketches. We're trying to get a meetup going around sketches. So if you're interested. Uh, we hope to announce that sometime for either late March or late April. Uh, we'll post that to the user group, so if you're interested, please join the user group. Thank you, John and Alex. Uh, we can take a few questions uh, before we start the next presentation, so um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I'll bring the mic on. So, hi, my name is Raj. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the question I have is when you're talking about intersections, uh, especially with uh, uh, our observation when we were using HLL, the intersection between a large set and a small set results actually in a very bad uh, approximation. Right? That, that's our observation because uh, if you take uh, US population, age, male versus people who visited uh, pillsbury.com as an example, intersection value few million intersection with a few thousand, uh, it goes for a toss. Like, and did you observe something, something similar to that? that that's a question. Yeah, so anytime you're doing something approximate like this, when you have massive, like, multiple orders of magnitude difference in sizes, uh, it, the error bounds are going to increase when you do something like an intersection. Um, the best solution is basically have your um, smaller sketch used as much of the data as possible. You increase K as large as you possibly can. But if it's too big a difference, you're going to, it's just sort of inherent in the process. Did you get to any K min hash approximation on top of that? Uh, what was the last one? K min hash approximation on top of that to get a, to store the actual uh, users rather than approximation on Like when you do an HLL, you're basically converting that into a, a, a byte array. Yeah, so I, I think Alex, did you want to that? You've done more on the presentation um, I wanted to add that uh, HLL, uh, as John already mentioned, is much more compact, but it's not as flexible as Theta Sketch, and it's not very good with intersections and set operations in general. So if you if you want set operations, we highly recommend using Theta Sketch instead. Theta Sketch, sorry. Yeah, they are larger, but way more flexible and much better with set operations. Um, so, data sketches are also doing a hash-based approach, uh, but it's structured differently, and they you know, they are larger, as Alex mentioned, and then we had the number of uh, what was 32K versus 2K, so you know, significantly larger in size, but definitely more flexible. Um, but that said, we did have, especially when we were doing set differences, uh, one of the team's internal they were trying to do stuff across the entire network of Yahoo, and uh, we have enough distinct you know, user cookies in the month that they ended up using a pretty big sketch to be able to do differences on some of the smaller, uh, uh, smaller combinations of dimensions. Um, so I mean, again, if you have enough orders of magnitude difference in size, you're you're always going to run into some level of issue. Okay, so we'll uh, close this session. If no other questions, thank you very much, John and Alex.